Well, I've been promising this for a while now, and here it is. If you've downloaded this model from my website already, this is the video blog on how to actually build it. And no one likes to read anymore. How old school. For those of you that have never seen this, this is a 3D printable Extra 300 radio-controlled airplane that was designed to fall just under the FAA weight limit of 250 grams. So it is indeed a remote ID killer or legal avoider or dodger or whatever. Now, this is not an indoor model. It uses a motor borrowed from a small race drone along with a small 4S LiPo battery. And this little guy flies fast with a very snappy roll rate. So it's by no means any sort of trainer, but it is a lot of fun. Besides, you can just print another one if you poke a hole in the ground with it. Now, as I mentioned, this is the construction video, and I won't be covering printing in this video, but I will cover that in a separate video, and it will be linked in the blog for this model on my website. This video is long, so make sure to take a look at the chapters so that you can come back as needed while you're building. Also, for any of you new guys, if you stay till the end, there will be information on where, when, and how to get this model for zero cost. I tend to give my things away from time to time. Funny people like that. So ready to get started. Let's go. I designed this model for using lightweight PLA and it's pretty commonly understood that lightweight PLA has a terrible time with retractions. So my solution to this problem is anywhere that I have a void and a body, I will just create an indention that's designed to be cut out later that creates a much cleaner print. So this is what you're seeing me do here. I like to print with brims on for support on the build plate. And what I'm doing here is I'm sanding the bottom of it to make it completely easy to remove. So I'm starting with the elevator here and it'll make sense why as we try to assemble a fuselage in a little bit. This is a two millimeter carbon rod. It's used to strengthen the elevator so that it doesn't twist. You just cut it to the length of the tension and then apply it with the angle. So this is upholstery thread. I'm using this to reinforce the model. Think of it like rebar and concrete. Puts everything in tension. You can use upholstery thread, which is much stronger than regular thread. You can use Kevlar thread, or you could actually use a one millimeter carbon rod as well. Um, but this process seems to work just fine for me. Very important, do not forget to put the elevator in place at this point. You'll never get it in afterwards if you don't.
We're going to reinforce the horizontal stabilizer with a one millimeter rod, and you're going to cut it to a length of 70 millimeters. This is the addition of a, a steerable tailwheel. This wasn't part of the original design. Originally, I just used a piece of the one millimeter carbon rod as a tail skid, but uh, what I learned very quickly is um, carbon grinds away pretty quick as a tail skid on this model and it ended up dragging the, the uh, rudder around. So this version, I haven't tried this yet, but I was gonna put a tailwheel on it. So I use uh, standard UV curable SLA print resin and I brush it on my parts as a method of removing layer lines. The stuff does not dry at all and you can continue to brush it until you like it, um, get all the runs out of it, let it flow out completely and then when you hit it with light, only then will this stuff activate and harden very quickly within a few seconds then you can just simply put another coat on it and do it, and it's very sandable. It really makes the part a lot stronger. So for something like a cowl, I highly recommend doing this. Make sure to wipe the part down when you're done with isopropyl alcohol, and then you can sand the part afterwards. Once you get all the way to the firewall, it's time to start putting tension on those strings and then applying CA glue liberally down the holes. You might need a third hand for this. Now it's time to start working on the center spark. So here I'm going to use the same upholstery thread and I'm going to wrap it twice around the perimeter of the spar. There's a groove just for this. This adds additional uh, rigidity for the spar.
think I'm going to cut out holes for the landing gear. Now I'm adding in the center landing gear and main wing spar support. There are holes in the main support for installing heat set threaded inserts to make the landing gear removable, but I'm trying to save weight here, so I'm going to bond these directly with CA. Here I'm measuring out two 2 millimeter by 7 millimeter carbon rods. These are going to go in the front, and they are what mount the wing assembly. Uh, they slide into the firewall to mount. probably guessed I'm just using this bag here as a barrier so that when I put the CA glue on this uh, part I don't bond the wing permanently to the fuselage. Notice I'm not permanently bonding the wings on yet. I'll want to keep these removable uh, for a later time when I put the ailerons together. What I'm using for a push rod on this plane is a 1.5 millimeter filament. Now this actually has to happens to be a TPU filament, but I have actually used successfully simply PLA filament for. Uh, there's enough flexibility here for it to be able to work no problem. bonding the wheel pants on, the inside parts of the wheel pants first, just make sure you have the axle holes aligned. 
The axles are simply M2 by 12 hex head bolts. Now I'm mounting the motor here with the hex bolts that were supplied with the motor. You'll want to make sure to have enough play in the holes of the motor mount so that you can get these bolts straight through uh, so that you don't have a tendency to cross thread the motor. It's a little bit tricky to do this, uh, but take your time with it. Uh, back them in and out until you get them just right. Also, you don't want your screws to be too long. You need to make sure that they don't ground your motor out. Uh, but usually the ones that come with the motor are just perfectly fine. Ultimately, you'll want to zip tie the ESC to the underside of the motor mount so that it's not touching your cowling. And again, these are M2 screws on uh, the side that hold the cowling together. Pretty much everything on this model was an M2 uh, Allen screw of some sort. This is a Buy Me A flight controller, and I'm using that in collaboration with an FSA8S receiver. It's a great, super lightweight, tiny, compact little flight controller. There's a link to this in the description. You can use the original 3-inch drone props that come with these motors, or that were designed for it, but I thought it looked a little funny, so I wanted to get a longer prop, and I didn't want to overtax this motor, so I elected for a two-blade, and this is a 4x2.5 two-blade prop. I also have a link to the description of where I picked this up. Uh, it seemed to work just fine, didn't overtax, didn't overheat. This is a 450 milliamp 4S tattoo lipo battery uh, it fits right inside the cavity of the engine mount perfectly great little battery not a lot of capacity but just enough for this model and not too much weight also we'll have a link for it and there's multiple ways to do hinges on a model like this uh, this method I wanted to show you I am cutting strips of very thin silk and I'm applying the SLA resin that I used earlier on the hinge location and then carefully dropping the silk strip as a tab over the top of this and allowing it to impregnate. And of course you don't want to get this on your fingers so be careful with that. Just be careful to get it on there. Once we have it in place we'll hit it with uh, the UV light. It will almost immediately dry and then we can do the same process again, uh, attaching it to the model. It creates a nice, very flexible, super strong pin that can be sanded. This is a doubler for the rudder and elevator servo tray. 
that's molded into the body. It just crinkles it up a little bit, so don't forget to include that. This model compact you'll see that I'm using a ball joint on the servo arm on the front servo this is because the servo arm literally runs straight across the back servo arm and this provides clearance here you can see the little by me a flight controller doing its thing when I wiggle it around it's trying to compensate back push rods are both just one millimeter carbon rods. And you'll see me here also attaching the little uh, control arms and uh, clips that come in a kit. Limey A flight controller must stay properly oriented and rigidly fixed inside the model, so I bonded it to the top of the servo. Double-sided foam tape is ideal for this, but I don't have any. So what you see me doing is applying a piece of tape to the servo and then to the controller and then bonding the two together with CA glue. Onto the ailerons here, I'm going to show a different sort of hinge assembly uh, using uh, piece of clear packing tape actually. So we start with using the SLA resin to seal the 3D print and then you see me cutting a strip of the plastic, applying it to the aileron and the wing. I'm going to fold it back and put a generous squeeze of thin CA down the seam and that will actually wick underneath the, uh, the adhesive creating a very bo strong bond but stays flexible. Now I'm finally bonding the wings in place permanently.
after I'm happy with everything regarding the ailerons, I will finally bond the servo tray for the aileron down to the belly of the wing pan. I'm attaching the aileron horns to the ends of the flexible filament. Lastly, putting on the prop, the uh, cowling is very, very close to the edge of the propeller, with no room for fingers, so what I will do is carefully insert the screwdriver into the outrigger shell of the motor to hold it in place so that I can tighten it. And that's it. All built. All radio control surfaces are good and moving in the correct direction. It's ready for a test flight. If you'd like to get this model for no cost, please do this. First, like and subscribe this video. Then leave me a shout out in the comments below. Afterwards, reach out to me through the contact form on my website. And in the body of the email, paste a copy of your comment and YouTube username. Today's March 19th of 24. For the next month, if no one else has claimed your comment, I'll reply with a single-use coupon code for 100% discount. I'll only do this for the month following the post of this video, so hurry and happy building.